I've been doing a lot of research on how to get the perfect edge. I think I found the solution. I put my workpiece underneath the track. I've got a scrap piece underneath it, and now we're ready to cut. I'll start with a scoring pass. I'll come back. I'll do a full plunge depth, and then I'll do the full cut to eliminate as much tear out as possible. No tear out, perfect cut every time. Hey guys, welcome to the channel, and today we're gonna to be talking about the ShopFox track saw. Now normally I am a firm believer in you get what you pay for, and I'm not a hater of Festool by any means. I'm just not a professional. Uh, I'm a hobbyist and I couldn't justify the cost of a Festool track saw. Now, ShopFox, some things about it, it is identical to two or three other brands. The only one that I know off the top of my head is Grizzly. So Grizzly is just green. It's the identical saw and the Shop Fox is this kind of cream or white color. First, I'll talk uh, about the saw and, and some modifications that, that I did in the saw as you see this duct tape here. So the saw uh, works well, not an extremely strong motor, but for, for um, all intents and purposes, it's fine. Um, it can easily get through plywood. Um, the dust collection is is decent, um, so I hook up a hose here, and there's a there's a hole right here, so I just put some uh, some duct tape over it to help increase the du the dust collection, and it does an all right job. It still is going to spit some out. One of the main reasons is because there's a there's a hole in the back here, um, and so that gaping hole right there, you're losing a lot of your suction, um, so you are going to get some sawdust coming out the uh, coming out the front here. Um, I will absolutely say if you get this, you need to order a different blade. Um, don't use the one that it comes with. You'll just be wasting your time. Um, so that's what I did right off the bat. I just cha um, changed the blade out and the results have been uh, as, as good as I could ask for. One of the things that I like to do is to help eliminate tear out is I take the saw and then when I go to run my first pass, instead of going and plunging all the way down and then going i plunge hard i mean maybe a sixteenth of an inch of the way down and i go all the way across and, and that pretty much just totally eliminates tear out so what i'm doing is the blade is just scraping the very top of the wood instead of coming up through the wood um, so i run um, a small little groove or channel first maybe a sixteenth of an inch go all the way across pretty quickly not going to get any tear out and then I bring it back and then I plunge uh, to the depth that I want and then I cut and that pretty much eliminates tear out. The saw does have a uh, bevel option so you can you can loosen this and the saw will then um, go out to whatever what, up to 45 degrees it'll go out but you do have to be careful because if you're sitting on this track there's nothing holding it to the track and so if you put all this weight over on this side here and, and are pushing it, it's going to want to fall off the track. So you're going to have to grip with your hand and, and, and hold uh, this plate to the track or they actually sell an accessory, a little plastic accessory uh, that will hold it onto the track. The, the track on the bottom has this, kind of feels like foam, um, and it does a pretty good job of sticking down. So uh, I usually just lay it on the plywood, get my mark, get my mark, and pass it along. The track originally when you get it, so this one hasn't been used yet, um, this rubber strip right here is oversized. So on your first cut, your first ever cut, it's going to cut this rubber to the size that it needs to be. And so what that does is it puts pressure on whatever you're cutting with this rubber. And so it, um, it holds down, the blade is coming up, and it uh, eliminates chip out on only one side of the workpiece. Now to eliminate chip out on the other side, like I said, just run 16th of an inch deep, maybe even a 30 second, run a little channel real fast over the top and then come back and plunge and then you'll eliminate chip out on both sides um, the, of the piece that you're working on. Some comments about the track. Um, 
the way that it's set up, you see these two black um, strips of plastic. That's what um, the saw's plate is, uh, is sliding across. And if you just put the saw on that, directly on that, it, it actually, since they're so close together, it can wobble. You can hear it. And so what I've done to eliminate that is I, I peeled up these, these black strips and I put one all the way back here and one all the way right here. So on this one you'll see the black strips are far apart and on this one you'll see how they're close together. So this is the one um, that I have not changed yet. I ordered two so that I can do that I can also rip an eight foot sheet of plywood as well. Um, but so that is the first modification that I did is I just moved those black strips to have double sided tape on them with the plastic and the double sided tape up. And then I stuck it on the outside um, and then right next to this rubber strip on the inside. And then now when the saw sits on there, there's no rocking whatsoever. It's, it's really rock solid. I will say, it is not perfectly straight. Now, for me, that's, that's not really a game changer. I mean, it's, it's slightly, ever so slightly cupped. To me, that's not a huge deal. Um, it's probably better than anything I could get uh, using a jig um, or anything like that. But it's, I will say it's not exactly straight. I mean, it's very, very close, but it's not exact. I got these off of Amazon. I think the saw is around $185. And the reason I got the um, shop box is because the Grizzly was, was 200. It's the exact same saw. So I got the shop box is 185. Um, the, uh, the track, I think right now they're selling for $60. So what I did is I ordered, um, I ordered one and the first one I got was cupped horribly. I just I put a string on one end, string on the other end, um, pulled it tight just to see if, uh, if this aluminum would track along it and you could see you know, that, the, that the track was cupped. So being Amazon, being defective, uh, I contacted them. I asked for a return. They shipped me a new one. I was able to compare those two. The one they shipped me was better. So I shipped the badly cupped one back and then I asked for another return. Um, because it was also defective. So they shipped me a third and I then compared those two and I just kept the best one. Um, I think I did it two or three times and I would do that process every time. I would just keep um, the best one out of the ones that they shipped me. Um, the, the cardboard that they ship it in, um, in, you might get, I noticed on some, the, very, the corners, um, there was nothing protecting them. So when they shipped, um, some of them were dinged up a little bit, but um, yeah, so I, I did that process. So if that's, if that's gonna annoy you and you don't wanna go through that trouble, to me it was, um, it was free shipping and uh, I wanted a good product. So I figured I'd, I'd do that um, process a few times just to see uh, um, what I could get. And uh, I'm, pretty, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results, especially for the price. Um, so 185 for the saw. 60 for the track you can get two and then you can get the kit that attaches them that comes with the clamps and the plastic piece to hold it down if you're doing a, a bevel cut um, so total you're probably somewhere around 250 260 all said and done for a track saw which i think is i mean impossible to beat hope this video was helpful for you please subscribe to the channel thanks for watching break it yourself and we'll see you next time